Here's our next project, a compass. This one's a little bit larger because it's for the whiteboard. Yours is going to be a little bit smaller. You're going to just have a insert in here. We'll put a nail in on this side for your pivot point and a piece of lead from a lead pencil in on the other side. So our next project is a wooden compass. Um, this pivot joint right here is going to be made on the CNC and then the bandsaw is going to cut these end pieces and then you're going to use a drill to drill in a nail and then the lead on this side. The thing about a compass and a straight edge, there's a whole part of geometry called constructions and the deal on constructions is, well I'm just going to run through two of them right here. You can only use a compass and a straight edge to make them. Um, and it, it really helps you with layout, whether you're building a house or splitting a property. So the first construction I was going to go over is the angle bisector. If you have a given angle and you want to bisect it with the construction, all you need to do is take your compass, draw an arc across that angle. I saw points equidistant from a vertex. From these points of intersection, you draw a couple more arcs. Where they intersect are all points equidistant from both this and this, yes. and connect those points. And there's an angle bisector. The second construction I was going to go over is a perpendicular bisector. If I have a given line segment, meaning a starting point and ending point, and I want to find a place halfway in between, that's going to bisect it, so cut it in two equal parts. The perpendicular, it'll form an exact right angle. Again, I use my compass. I have to set it on a setting greater than half the distance, and then I need to keep it there. So I create an arc from this point, create an arc from this point. These are all points equidistant from two given points. So that's a uh, perpendicular bisector. I use my straight edge. I draw through here and that gives me both a perpendicular and a bisector. So there's a lot of constructions. Those are just two of them that you'll be able to do with your new uh, ruler and compass. This is what yours is going to look like. Uh, hinge at the top, six inches long, piece of lead, and a nail. Okay, on the compass project, first thing I'm going to do, this is three-quarter inch maple dowel. And any dowel will work, but this is three-quarter, um, and it works well because I'm going to cut a quarter inch slot out of there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want two six-inch lengths. I'm actually just going to cross-cut it at 12 first. I'm going to do some machining so I have more wood to work with. And once I've done that, then I'm going to cross-cut it again. Here's my quarter inch board. This is actually a nice off cut of rosewood, but any quarter inch board will work. This is a donation from a guitar maker. I'm going to use this to mark the width of my end on the back of the board here. I'm going to do that on both sides. So I like to keep this thing the foot long so I keep my fingers as far away from the blade as possible. Okay, both sides are a good snug fit. Try a little bit of sanding, and the fact that they don't line up is fine. And now I'm going to cross cut it. Again, the reason I kept it this long was to have so much wood to hold on to. I'm going to have the rosewood hinge. This I'm going to cut out on the CNC. It'll fit in both those ends. Then on these ends right here, I have a piece of graphite from a drafting pencil. And then I have a nail, and that's going to be my sharp point. I use the calipers to find the thickness of these. This is about uh, 0.07. And 0.0625 is a sixteenth of an inch. So that works. So I have a 1 16th inch bit. And this takes a little bit of precision. I want to make sure I'm vertical going in there and centered. And 
that'll be the hole for my nail head. What I'm going to do with this nail is I'm actually going to use a hacksaw and cut the head off and have the sharp end pointing out. Okay, we're going to draw our compass hinge and master cam. I go machine type, router, techno servo. Under property manager, I do my stock setup. I'm going to start in the lower left hand corner. My board's actually about three inches by five and it's a quarter inch thick. And then uh, F9 brings in my cross here. I'm going to create a rectangle. And the two dowels are three quarters each, so that gives me one and a half. So I'm going to go one and a half over. And actually, I only go one and a half up. That's the depth of that slot. And then here is fit screen. So that's really the hinge. The main reason you cut it on master cam is this wood is too small to cut on any traditional tools. Get your fingers too close to the blade, so it's a much safer way to cut it out. Uh, I'm going to fill it this lower corner here. It's a pretty big fillet, a half inch fillet. And that's so, uh, you know, the one's going to be fixed on this side, the other one's going to pivot over here, and this will allow it to swing around. And that's kind of it for the whole geometry of the hinge. Uh, I'm all done. I'm going to toolpath it with a contour. I'm going to go clockwise, clockwise around as a chain. I'm going to use a quarter inch flat end mill. I'm going to set my feed rate at 60, 30. Cut parameters, I'm going clockwise around, so that'll put the bit on the outside when this is left, so that's good. Depth of cuts, I'm actually going to go to 0.2, so I'm going to do it in two depths of cuts. Lead in, lead out, I'll turn off. And then lastly, on linking parameters, I'm going to set them all to absolute and make this a negative, negative 0.25. As my tool path around the outside, verify. An isometric view, fit screen, and there's my piece being cut out. That's perfect. I'm going to save my file. Very important. I go file, you know, I save it, um, and then I'm going to post it. So saving and posting are different. I want to post it. It's going to take all this information, convert it to an NC file. I'm going to actually save it on my desktop. And I've taken all this information and converted it into this numeric code, and that's what the router is going to run. All right, let's go run it, put it together. Here it is all finished. Uh, the hinge is placed in there. Um, this side I used screws to fasten it down. This side's fixed. And then I used a bolt through this side, and that allows it to pivot. And then on this end, there's my sharp nail and my pencil lead. And then let's see how it works. You can open it up. Works great. Great to make your own tools.